What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button and join Ninja Nation. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start out with Zach Grinke, who had these pretty curveballs ranging from 68 to 72 miles an hour, and this nasty changeup on his way to 5Ks in six and a third innings, giving up no runs. An excellent outing by Zach. He was up against Dylan Cease, who had 8Ks in six innings, giving up one run on three hits. Cease's slider and knuckle curve were filthy as always. Cease lowered his ERA on the season to 1.96. He also has a .66 ERA over his last 14 starts, which is the third lowest over 14 starts in Major League history. That's how good Dylan Cease has been. But he wasn't good enough for the All-Star game. Framber Valdez had these sick curveballs. I mean, that curveball is legit filthy. Opponents are only hitting 151 against his curveball with a 42.3% whiff rate. He also had fastball and cutter working, which complement his curveball really well. Here's an overlay of his fastball and curveball, and you can see how that curveball disappears. JT Brubaker had six Ks in five innings, giving up only two runs and three hits. He had this 87 mile an hour changeup and then this KO curveball. Ninja referee Steve Willis, count him out. Merrill Kelly had six Ks in five innings, giving up three runs, and was absolutely painting. I mean, look at this front door sinker and back door cutter. Kelly is incredibly underrated. His ERA this year, 2.95. Zach Plezak had seven Ks in six and a third innings, giving up only one run and four hits, showcasing his sliders and changeup. Dakota Hudson had six Ks in five innings, thanks to his sinkers and breaking balls. Herman Marquez was overpowering yesterday with 99 and 100 mile an hour fastballs and 89 mile an hour knuckle curves. He had six Ks in six innings. And I just get a strong feeling his stats would be a lot better if he pitched somewhere else other than Colorado. Kyle Gibson had this nasty slider, but was out by Edward Cabrera. Cabrera was filthy. He had six strikeouts in five and two-thirds innings, giving up no runs, and lowered his ERA to 2.05 on the season. He had sick curveballs and sliders, but my favorite pitch of his is his 94-mile-an-hour changeup. There's no world where that is a fair pitch. On to the Field of Dreams game. Nick Lodolo had these wicked sliders. With that arm slot, this is a really nasty pitch for him. He had six Ks in four and two thirds innings, but did give up four runs. He was out by Drew Smiley, who had nine Ks in five innings, thanks to this filth. But to me, the real star of the game was John Tumpain, AKA the Ripper. He turned the field of dreams into the field of screams. Ah! Look at him absolutely slaughtering hitters who dared to go down looking. I've warned you, do not take a called third strike when the ripper is behind the plate. He has the best cutter since Mariano. Boo. Now onto my filthiest relievers. Cue the... No, this is Alexis Diaz. Alexis Diaz had these nasty sliders. Brian Shaw had these filthy elevated cutters. Matt Barnes had this vicious knuckle curve and fastball and K strut. Yes. John Schreiber was a pure electric factory picking up the save. Connor Brogdon had these filthy changeups, but my filthiest reliever from yesterday was Tanner Scott. Check out these 90 mile an hour sliders, including this one that ends up behind the hitter. Filthy. And now, my Pitching Ninja moment of zen. It's like Moonlight Graham was watching over the Field of Dreams game. What's up, Ninja Nation? My picks of the day today are for Jose Barrios to have seven Ks or more, and for Tony Gonsolin to have seven Ks or more. What would your picks of the day be?